Ladies and gentlemen, happy Friday. I'm happy to say my first guest tonight is a two-time Academy Award-winning actress and director who has been captivating audiences for over five decades. Please welcome Jodie Foster. some of those other places. Oh, no, no. This is the best audience in wow. television right here. Yeah. Um, uh, thanks for being here. It's lovely to meet you. Oh, my gosh. So much fun. I'm a big fan. I watch you all the time. Oh, thanks very much. I'm a big fan of yours as Mostly well. Mostly on my phone. I do a lot of it on my phone. Oh, sure, sure. You are. That's what people do yeah. these days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that because it's smaller. It <laughs> looks like I lost weight. Now, um, a lot of people, um, I mean, People, we've been watching you uh, in the public eye since you were the you were the copper tone baby. I was at okay three. at three years old. I was. So, well, I just did the commercial in the '60s, and there, I you know the advertisement with a little girl. I'm not a billboard. Okay. Just in case you were wondering. All right. I'm just the television. You're baby. You're just the television baby. Right. Okay. Well, could have gotten it. I know. I know. <laughs> But we've been watching you for, you know, in various forms, on various media for 50 years. Uh, uh, the, the movie that a lot of people know you from, or best got to know you, was Silence of the Lambs, yep. which was made in 1991. When's the, when's the last time you watched that movie? Uh, I guess it was a couple of years ago. My sons hadn't seen it, so uh, they were having some kind of celebration and they they had a 35 millimeter print in a beautiful old theater so we all saw it in the real theater no did had they not seen it because you didn't want them to see this movie or they didn't want to see the movie uh, they, they were too young my older one I think had snuck in was able to see it but mm -hmm. my little one he was really because it's really scary I guess it is <laughs> I guess so that's what people say yeah I don't see it but you yes. don't see the scary part. No. At no point. Just because you were in it, you saw how it was made, and you're like, ah, nah, I get him in the end. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like that. But we all know that you're going to get him in the end, and we still think it's scary, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because there's less, you know, violence and blood and all that other kind of stuff than you see normally these days. And right. yet it still gets you. Hannibal Lecter does cut a man's face off and wear it as his own face. <laughs> That's true. It's that not true. exactly yeah, I forgot about Disney. That. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Anthony Hopkins, of course, is, uh, is, is Hannibal Lecter in it, a wonderful performance. Was he, was he intimidating on set? Was he, like, kind of method, always sort of in his creepy character? Well, he scared me to death, mostly because he, I, I did the first part of the movie without him there. So I had never really met him. I had only met him around a table, and we were, were never able to talk. And uh, having heard him do a rehearsal, I just never wanted to talk to him again. Uh, <laughs> And they had these, this glass partition between Lecter and Clarice. Sure. Um, so they, they had to screw him in to his cell block on the very first day, so I never got to talk to him. And we did the very first scene without being able to speak to each other. And he really scared me again. And so then I just was like, I just, we never spoke to each other during the shoot, really. Wow. And, and when do you see him now? Um, well, the last day of shooting, I was eating a tuna fish sandwich, which is the part I remember, and he said, um, I said, well, you know, I didn't, I, you scared me. And he said, you scared me. <laughs> so Why now, did you scare him? I Do don't you know? know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe He's, that's a little telling about Anthony Hopkins. Maybe. He might be afraid of just convincing <laughs> West Virginia accents. That's yeah, true. How, uh, you, that was one of the things, as, as somebody who grew up in the South, that accent is like spot on. That's, ex is it? that's exactly right. You must have gotten kudos for that, right? Uh, I, I, I guess so. I mean, you know, a character's a full thing, right? It's the, yeah. it's the little sweater, it's the big hair, it's the out of beads. Okay, it's the whole write thing that together. Down. Little sweater. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been making movies for over 50 years. Do they still, do movies still wow you? You're a director yourself now, you've been an actor for many years. Or do you look at the movie and go, I know how they made that? No, I mean, I'm especially wowed by actors. I don't know how they do it. I just, every time I do a movie as a director and my actors come forward and they just bring so much to the table, I always just, I'm in awe of what they do. And then I forget that I do that too. 
I, funny you should say that because I, I had a, a chance to meet Anthony, Anthony Hopkins in Los Angeles uh, this fall for for just just a moment. We talked for maybe ten mm -hmm. minutes, and I immediately asked him about how he how he started off, and he told me about doing The Lion in Winter, which was his first movie with Peter O'Toole and and Catherine Hepburn. And he said the very first day, very first scene, Catherine Hepburn just said, "Do you want some advice about how to act?" Oh. And she gave him advice about how to act on camera. Do do you do that like? Do you see, like, have you worked with someone who has never been on camera before and say, oh, yeah. this is how you got to do it? I, I work with people all the time that have never been on camera. And I'm a terrible person to ask because I started very young. I never went to Juilliard. I, don't, I feel like I don't have any credentials as an actress. Uh, and Only work. Yeah, that's it. I sort of, you know, learned on the job. And um, I have my own way of doing things. And I, you know, sometimes my advice is like, you know, make sure you sit down because if you stand up for too long, your feet are going to hurt. You know, that's <laughs> That's really all I have to contribute. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to my master class. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, now you're you're a, a private person, and which is a good thing, you know, if you're in the public eye to keep your personal life private. But if you if you don't mind me getting a tiny sure. peek in there, like, what do you do for fun? What's what's Jody Foster doing for fun? What do I do for fun. Um, I really like football. Uh, really? Which is strange. Yeah. I'm almost embarrassed by. Uh, I, what position do you play? Uh, <laughs> I try not to play. I do, you know, I have a, a bunch of Nerf balls that I do throw around. Who's your team? Uh, Green Bay. Okay. I'm not having a are great you, year. But... Are you have a relationship to Green Bay? I think that's a little too personal, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really love the cheese heads. Sure. So I like to wear those. Who doesn't? Um, and, you know, I like fantasy. I like the fantasy. I like all the alerts in my pocket, and I, you know, I like Do you play fantasy football? Yeah. I didn't play this year, but I, because, you know, there's a lot going on in politics, and there's just only so much anxiety and emergencies that I can handle. And so I was dedicating myself to... And football dedicate. was your way away from that. Yeah, so I yeah. just wanted to have... This year, football is second, and, you mm -hmm. know, Trumplandia is first. Yeah. <laughs> I, you went to a, a, a school where you had to learn French when you were younger, didn't yes. you? Yes. What was that school? Was it a Sacred Heart? What was it? It was Le Lycée Français de Los Angeles. Okay, that's fancy. Yeah. That's fancy. <laughs> you, you still, do you keep it up? I do. Um, I have, you know, people, friends who live there, and uh, my nieces and nephews live there, so I speak mm -hmm. French with them. And, um, you know, I mean, there's not much you can do in Los Angeles speaking French unless you run into French people. So <laughs> maybe when I'm playing football or something all by myself, I just, you know, you know, lance le ballon, you know, things like that. <laughs> Just, have just you seen translations of your movies into French? And have you gone like, that's not what it's like at all? I, I actually, I actually dub my movies in French most of my life. I've you do your own? I do my own dubbing. How do you say, how do you say, uh, Silence do you say? of the Lambs in French? Le silence des agneaux. It's not as scary. No. It's, it doesn't scary. really work. Sounds like a delicious dish. It doesn't. <laughs> Tonight we have the Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> Yes. The lamb is very quiet because it is dead. <laughs> <laughs> but so delicious. <laughs> um, we got to take a little break, but we're right back with more Jody Foster. Stick around, everybody. Wow, what a cliffhanger. What's going to happen in the next Late Show video? Click subscribe to find out.